Let's make a countdown timer with sound alarm application in Godot. While the time application might not be spectacular and I was a bit skeptical if I should make a tutorial on it, I realized there were quite some points to make which is especially reasonable if you are just starting out with Godot or programming in general. Here's what the application should be able to do, but I'm not going to read that out loud. Let's create a new project in Godot. We need a nice sound sample for our alarm. Just search for any sound generator like JSFXR or others. Create and save the sound file and put it in your Godot project directory. As root node, we set a control node. And as child node, we add a VBox container node. Then we set the layout of the VBox container to full rectangle. We save the scene. And then we run it. As expected, not much happens. Now might be the time to stop the video, since we will be creating a lot of nodes. As children of the VBox container node, we add a line edit, a label and three buttons. And as children of the control node, we add an audio stream player, a timer, a tween and a color act. We select the color act and set the layout to full rectangle. Then in its modulate property, we set everything except the color red to zero. Be careful to select modulate and not self modulate, otherwise other layers won't be affected. Since it's an overlay, we don't want it to interfere with mouse clicks and set the mouse filter to ignore. We select the audio stream player and set our saved sound sample as its stream. We see that the sound file's duration is about one second. Later, we should set the constant time for repeated plays a bit longer than that. Now let's create our main script in the control node. We test if the sound file plays properly and run the scene. We make some adjustments to the line edit and label nodes to center their content and we edit the text of the three buttons. In the script, we define default values for when the alarm starts and how long it takes until the sound file is played repeatedly, which should be a bit longer than the length of the sound sample. And we also create an initialize function stub. We create some variables to easily access our nodes. We then fill in our initialize function. Here we set the line edit and the label to the default values. Do a little bit of window tricks that should read pretty self-explanatory. And to allow editing the time as soon as the application starts, we grab the focus and select all. We run the scene again and it should look like this. Now we want the elements to extend the area, so we set vertical size flex to expand and fill, which should look like this. And to avoid spacing between the elements, we set the separation constants of the VBox container to zero, which now should look like this. We only want the line edit field for the countdown to be focusable with mouse and keyboard, so we disable focus on the buttons. We now connect the UI element signals to some functions. We need to do a little bit of refactoring now to allow for the countdown time to be changed and code to be reused.
And we also make sure to have two new lines between functions. Before we define a function, we can write comments about what we want to do, which even might contain pseudocode, and only later fill it out with actual code. Here we define the function that sets our counter on start time if the input is a valid integer. Otherwise, it comfortably selects all in the line edit to allow for easier number input. This is also the place to give visual feedback that the number input was invalid. We make the tween and the color rect overlay nodes accessible through a variable and insert the code that shows the color overlay. It will look like this. Let's shortly think about how we implement the functions of the three buttons. We see that the start restart button uses parts of the stop reset button. Godot allows to stop the process function, otherwise we would need to use variables as flags to know if the timer is running or paused. We can also see the part that will go in our process function. First we make the timer node accessible through a variable. And then we start to fill in the function for the stop reset button. As you can see, our nodes became comments and the comments have been filled in with code. The pause continue button is implemented easily. We simply toggle the running of the process function. Now let's implement the start restart button. Again, our nodes became comments and we fill those in with code. We see that this part has something in common with the stop reset button. So we refactor parts of the code. This part here is actually not in the button function, but will be moved to the process function. We fill in those comments with code, and we also play the sound file immediately if the countdown event is triggered. What we have to do now is to implement the handling of the timer's timeout signal. Let's run the scene. We need to format the current time to two decimals, so we replace this with that. To also give visual feedback when the pause button is pressed when the countdown is finished already, we refactor the code a bit. Running the scene, it should look like this now. To prevent the countdown running automatically when running the scene, we change this to that. Here's the whole code. And here's a little summary of the points discussed in this video. There you have it. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope you learned something. Bye.